Well, hello. Hi, everyone. People are joining, so we're going to give a couple of minutes or so uh, to, to let people arrive to this room, and then we'll, we'll get started. Uh, I'm speaking to you from Edinburgh. I'm, I'm sure we have people from uh, different places today. So if you want, uh, you can share where you are at the moment using the, the chat box. So we have people from Bath, from UK. It's a warm morning, isn't it? It's a bit windy here in, in Edinburgh. Buckinghamshire, from Seaford. Bushy, uh, someone from Italy, from Venice, and soon traveling to Spain, right? Buongiorno, bonjour, morning. Anna from London, Essex. And Broadway was a show. All right. Okay, well, let's start now. Uh, good morning and welcome to everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Javier Ramos Linares, and I am Education uh, Advisor at the Spanish Embassy Education Office, the, the Consejería de Educación. Uh, thank you very much for attending this presentation. And on behalf of the Consejería, I would like also to thank the uh, organizers of uh, Language Show to, to invite us uh, to this event, uh, celebrating uh, languages, uh, in this three days celebrating languages. Before uh, starting my talk, I would like to uh, share with you um, some practical information about how, how we are running uh, the talk. Uh, we have, like, uh, as you may know, 45 minutes for the talk. I will devote the first part, like 35 minutes or so, to, to present the slides that we have prepared. Uh, uh, and during this time, uh, please feel free to use the, 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 the chat box that you have uh, uh, on, on, on the top or uh, at the bottom of your screen, that may depend on, 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 on the device you're using. Uh, you can put any comments or interactions that you, you want to share uh, with the rest of the participants. But please bear in mind that I won't be able to follow the, 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 talk, uh, the chat box during my talk, uh, not, not due to uh, technical limitations, but to personal limitations, because if I do so, uh, I, there's a high risk that I could lose the track of what I'm saying. Uh, I'm, I'm, I, I, I ask you for your understanding about this. Uh, uh, in any case, if you want to uh, address uh, any questions or, or, or comments uh, that you want to, to address to me, you can use the, uh, the, other, uh, the, the other box, the Q&A box, Preguntas y Respuestas, uh, on the top or at the bottom of your screen. Um, and I will go at the end of my presentation to that Q&A box and read your comments and questions and, and try to answer. Uh, as you know, uh, this uh, session will be, uh, it's been recorded already, so you will be able to watch it again if you want to do so. And, and besides that, if you want a copy of the presentation that I'm going to share with you, 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 you can download it from the space uh, of this talk in the main lobby uh, in the language show. You can do it uh, whenever you want uh, during, during the language show. Remember, we have also a space in the virtual exhibition that you can visit uh, at any time. Uh, and if you want to talk to uh, someone from the Consejería, uh, there, there will be one of my colleagues today and tomorrow from 10 to 12 in the morning. Uh, so you can you can visit it at any time and and during these uh, two hours today and tomorrow you can chat with someone from uh, from the consejería uh, and of course you can always email us I'm I'm, uh, I'm gonna share with you uh, my my slides because in the first one uh, 
uh, you have our, our, our contact details. Let me share the screen. Can you can you see the screen? Please use the the the, the chat box to confirm if, if you can watch the screen that, that I'm sharing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, that's perfect. So here you have our, our contact details, uh, our our email, uh, our website, uh, and Twitter and Instagram handle also. Right. So let me start by showing you briefly uh, who we are and, and what we do. Uh, the Consejería de Educación, as you know, is the Spanish Embassy Education Office. And the main objective of our office is to promote and support the teaching of Spanish here in the UK. And we do so through a variety of actions. You can visit our website to see all the actions that we have. You can follow us on Twitter uh, to know all our activities. And you can also follow us uh, on Instagram. You have it here. Uh, and Instagram, uh, the profile uh, that we have created, it's a, uh, a, a profile focused on tips for Spanish resources and ideas uh, for the Spanish class. Um, remember, you can download this presentation from the, um, the main lobby in the space of, of, uh, of our talk. Um, all right, and our Spanish Embassy Education Office belongs to a bigger network, which is called Acción Educativa Exterior. You have the logo here. Uh, the Acción Educativa Exterior is part of the Spanish Ministry of Education. Um, and the main objective of, of this network is the dissemination of the Spanish language and the education and culture in Spanish. That is why we are present in 47 countries. You have them here uh, on, on, on this slide with this symbol. You, you see that we are in, in, on five continents. And through this network, we give support to around 5,000 schools, either Spanish schools abroad or uh, local schools in, in different countries. Uh, around 10,000 teachers, uh, Spanish teachers of Spanish, participate in our uh, teacher training program. And our network also includes uh, 5,000 language assistants who are sent from Spain to different countries every year, also to the UK, to support the, the, the teaching of Spanish in the education systems uh, of other countries. Uh, we work closely with uh, the Instituto Cervantes, which is, as you probably know, another Spanish institution, which complements our work by teaching Spanish uh, uh, and disseminating culture in Spanish in 87 countries, in, um, sorry, in 87 centers in 44 countries. Uh, so the map shows other places where the promotion and teaching of Spanish also reaches uh, through, uh, through the Instituto Cervantes. It is, as you can see uh, in the map, a network that extends all over the world. So a global network, global. And global is the term that we have chosen for the title of this talk, Global Spanish. Uh, if you've read the description of the talk, uh, you may have seen that we have selected some other terms to describe Spanish. Universal and local, millenary and digital, uh, direct and subtle, diverse and united. Mm, our aim during this talk is, is precisely to show how all these uh, words can be applied to the Spanish language and why this is a sign of the richness and potential of uh, our language. But let's start from the beginning, from the origins of, of our language. I'm sure you know, uh, you've heard the word Castellano, Castilian. It is another term that uh, it is also used to talk about the Spanish language. And it refers to the place where, um, the place in, in Spain, Castilla, or specifically the, the, the north uh, part of Spain, the, mount, the mountains of, on, on the north of the Spanish peninsula, where a language began to take shape a language which was different from Latin and which we know today as Spanish. Uh, the process of shaping this language, uh, as we know it, it, it it's, it's been a long one, it's taken centuries. And at this point, I would like to recall the words of a Spanish writer 
Miguel de Unamuno, you have his picture here. He, he, he's a Spanish writer of Basque origin, but who spent most of his life in Castilla. In fact, he was rector of the University of, of Salamanca. Here you have a quotation uh, from his book, Entorno al Casticismo, published in 1902. Uh, let me re uh, read the text in Spanish that you have here on, on the slide. La lengua es el receptáculo de la experiencia de un pueblo y el sedimento de su pensar. En los hondos repliegues de sus metáforas ha ido dejando sus huellas el espíritu colectivo del pueblo, como en los terrenos geológicos, el proceso de la fauna viva. So, in this quote, Unamuno says that a language is a reflection of the experience of a people, la experiencia de un pueblo, of their way of thinking, su pensar, of their collective spirit, su espíritu colectivo. Or to put it in another way, Spanish is a reflection of what we are, we, the people who speak Spanish. Um, in a much more recent book, another writer, um, Lorenzo Silva, uh, it, it's a book called Castellano. You have the cover here on the slide. It's a book that was, uh, was published in 2021. He also insists on, on the idea uh, that in language are the traces of what we are. And in Spanish, we can be uh, contundentes. We can be forceful when we use war words like uh, despojo, achazo, sopapo, merluzo, but at the same time, we can also approach beauty, uh, almost a, a, a mystical beauty, when we use words like horizonte, lumbre, temblor, uh, alma. Uh, and in this marvelous language that is Spanish, there is uh, room for different ways of thinking, for different feelings, for different latitudes, for different accents. Uh, an example, all these personalities of Spanish culture, some of whom we have already mentioned and we will uh, continue to mention throughout this talk. Uh, there are people from very different origins and very different uh, sensibilities and, and latitudes. I guess you may recognize uh, many of them uh, let's watch the video that I have linked here. Uh, it's a short video that is what it was made for the celebration of the Spanish Day in the United Nations. And while we watch the video, why don't you post in the chat the names of the people that you recognize? Let me share the video with you. Here we are. Yes, uh, 
You have recognized many of them, Monserrat Caballé, Garcia Márquez, Garcia Lorca. We have René from Calle 13, Rosalía de Castro, Vargas Llosa, Elvira Lindo, Isiar Boyaín, Irene Vallejo, Almudena Grandes, Julio Cortázar, Fernando Aramburu, García Lorca, Carmen Laforet, Rosa Montero, Paloma Díaz Más, Miguel de Unamuno, Rosalía, Muñoz Molina, Isabel Allende, etc., etc., etc. All these artists are united by Spanish, which they speak or, or spoke, with different cadences and accents, but all of them, what, what, what they have written, what they, what, what they have filmed, what they sing, is part of uh, the cultural heritage of, of culture in Spanish, cultura en español. No? Uh, the, the video that we have watched is a good tool to promote Spanish, and uh, it includes some information about the Spanish language, but now I would like to review some of the most important uh, facts and figures uh, about Spanish. Uh, okay, let me share this map with you. There are two references that are very useful when it comes to knowing the uh, current situation of Spanish. Uh, these are the reports El Mundo Estudia Español, uh, published by the Acción Educativa Exterior uh, of the Spanish Ministry of Education, and the yearbook El Español en el Mundo, published by the Instituto Cervantes. Uh, these two publications are linked here, and they are also very useful uh, to know the evolution of the figures uh, of Spanish, because they have been published periodically uh, for more than 20 years. Um, so according to these reports, uh, to the most recent data, Spanish is the, the mother tongue of almost 500 million people, that is to say 7.5% of the world's population, and it is the official language in a very large territory covering more than 19 million square kilometers. It is the official language, as you know, of 21 countries, 19 countries in Central and South America, then in Europe, uh, Spain, and uh, in Africa, Equatorial Guinea. So in the map of the slide, you can see in different shades of uh, green color, the, the native Spanish speaking population around the world, not only when it is official language, but also in some other countries. Here we, we see that the four countries with the largest Spanish speaking population are places where Spanish is official language, Mexico, Argentina, sorry, Mexico, Colombia, Argentina, and Spain in, in that order, Mexico, Colombia, Argentina, and Spain. And the fifth uh, country, the, the country in the fifth place is, uh, is a country where Spanish is not official language, is as you may guess, the United States. Okay, so here is a map uh, of the distribution of the Hispanic population of the United States, uh, a map that I have taken from the Observatory of Spanish at Harvard University. And what we can call the Hispanic factor is in the United States is essential for the dissemination of the Spanish. Uh, its strong growth means that the US, uh, the, 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 the population, the Hispanic population in the US is already a consumer niche that has become a target for cultural productions, for international media, etc. That is why, for example, we have the Latin Grammys or the CNN uh, in Espanol. Uh, if we take into account the cultural influence that the US has on, on the English speaking market, the vast English speaking market, the fact that these productions uh, and events in Spanish are increasingly visible makes the US uh, a key platform for the dissemination of Spanish and Hispanic culture. This is what happens, for example, when, when everyone is watching the Oscars and Jorge Drexler, Jorge Drexler is a, a singer from Uruguay, takes the stage to collect his award for the best song, Al Otro Lado del Rio. And, uh, and he speaks and sings in Spanish for the whole world. It, it was an epic moment. I don't know if you remember, uh, but I, let, let's remember it now. I'm going to share the video link here. Yes, a, a, small, a, a small video, a small clip. Uh, of Jorge Dressler in the stage of the Oscars. Clavo mi remo en el agua, llevo tu remo en el mío, creo que he visto una luz al otro lado del río, 
El día le irá pudiendo poco a poco al frío. Creo que he visto una luz al otro lado del río. Chao. That was a magical moment. He speaking Spanish for the for the whole world. Um, and this is the current situation of the influence of Spanish through the states uh, at the moment. But what about the forecast? It is predicted that in in by 2060 or so, almost a third uh, uh, of the U.S. population, that is one out of three American, will be of Hispanic origin. And the United States will become the second largest Spanish speaking country in the world after Mexico. So that's amazing, isn't it? Um, okay, so we have then a language with a great cultural weight, uh, great uh, potential, and which occupies, as we have seen, a large area. The, the, the video link in this slide is entitled El Español Lengua Global and has been produced by the government's high commissioner for the promotion of, of Spanish. Let's watch the video. It's a short video. It's a short one also. Um, I'm going to share it with you it's here. Yeah, del español lengua global. Somos diversos, dispares, vivimos en diferentes países, pero tenemos algo en común, nos entendemos, hablamos, escribimos, pensamos, programamos y sentimos en español. Somos más de 570 millones de hablantes, más de 500 millones de oportunidades, de puertas abiertas a la innovación, más de 500 millones de historias individuales que conforman una gran historia común. Hace cinco siglos, las lenguas peninsulares fueron pioneras en dar la vuelta al mundo. Hoy son el vínculo de una comunidad que trasciende mares y continentes. El español nunca duerme, se emplea a todas horas en todas partes. Es la tercera lengua más utilizada en Internet y la segunda en las redes sociales. El español nos acerca, es la expresión de una cultura y unos valores compartidos para los que no existen distancias ni fronteras. El español es la llave del futuro, es la esencia de la marca España, es la herramienta para seguir escribiendo la historia, la ciencia y la cultura. Por eso, innovamos en español y desde España. El 76% de los hogares en nuestro país tiene acceso a banda ancha ultra rápida. Contamos con la mayor red de fibra óptica de Europa y la tercera más grande del mundo. Además, estamos enseñando el español a las máquinas. Impulsamos las tecnologías de lenguaje para que las aplicaciones y los sistemas estén al servicio de todas las personas en nuestro idioma. Estamos a la cabeza en la aventura hacia el mundo digital, como una vez lo estuvimos hacia el nuevo mundo. Alrededor del planeta, nuestra milenaria lengua nos hermana en una poderosa comunidad de hispanohablantes que se expande para convertirse en una expresión de crecimiento. Porque el futuro en español es imparable y en 30 años será la lengua de más de 700 millones de personas. La era digital se está escribiendo en español, nuestro legado común. El español lengua global. Gobierno de España. All right. So it's a cool video. Yeah, it's 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 got uh, very interesting ideas. I like the sentence that says el español nunca duerme. Spanish never sleeps because it's a, a very large territory. Uh, but as you have seen, the video includes uh, a, a series of ideologies of ideas that form part of what we can call shared consciousness about Spanish. No? Here we have on the slide some of those ideas. El español, lengua de todos. Spanish, a language for all. El español es una lengua universal. Spanish is a universal language. Eh, el español es una lengua de encuentro y diálogo. Spanish is a language for encounter and dialogue. And el español, unidad en la diversidad. Spanish, unity in diversity. I would like us to focus now on this last idea of unity in diversity, because I think it is one of the assets of Spanish as a, as a global language. Um, 
we speak of unity in diversity because the Spanish language bases its unity on the integration of multiple varieties. Uh, on the one hand, despite the great extension of Spanish, the great extension that we have already seen in the previous slides, it is a language with a high level of unity and mutual understanding among the speakers. The, the, there is a, a writer and journalist, Alex Grigelmo, that points out that only 2%, you have it on the slide here, 2% of the Spanish words are not common and belong to different linguistic varieties, just only 2%. But we all love to talk about this 2% of the words with the remaining 98% of the words. Uh, there is a, a book published recently in 2021 with the title Lo Uno y lo Diverso. You, you have the cover here, uh, the one and the diverse, which talks precisely about this. Uh, it is a collection of texts by the most representative uh, current authors of literature in Spanish. These writers are from different geographical origins, and in the in the texts, uh, they talk about uh, these small misunderstandings, uh, funny and curious situations that provoke this two percent of the words typical of the different varieties of Spanish. When you use coger, for example, in certain contexts, it's a normal word, but it's a taboo word in in, in some other regions of uh, uh, of, of Hispanic. Uh, uh, world, no. uh, but beyond these anecdotes that we all love, the truth is that a Spanish, uh, uh, in Spanish, we all understand without much effort. Uh, relating to this idea, I would like to highlight the word panispanismo or panispanico, which is the word that we use to refer to global Spanish or to the universality of the Spanish language. Uh, panispanismo. Uh, Panispanism is not a new term. Uh, the, the writer Benito Perez Caldos, Caldos uh, was the writer from the, uh, the, the, the late uh, 19th century, the beginning of the 20th century. He already used the, this word in the mouth of one of his characters in, in España Tragica, which is the second novel of the finance series of the Episodios Nacionales, uh, a novel published in 1909. So he used uh, in, in, uh, in that year, he already used that 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 term, no, panispanismo. However, it it took a long time, almost a century, for the the, the the Spanish Academy to accept or to enter this word in the Spanish dictionary. That was in 2001. Uh, when we use the term panispanic, we are recognizing that uh, Spanish, despite the differences, is a united language. The word panispanismo seeks to represent all the countries in which Spanish is spoken. And this is something that the uh, institutions of the 21st century have understood, understood sorry, completely well. Uh, the most recent publication on Spanish language are the result of a consensus and an agreement between all the academies, the, the Spanish Academy and the academies of the rest of the uh, uh, Spanish speaking countries. This is what happens, for example, with the publication that you have on the slide, the grammar, the dictionary of the language, the orthography, and the dictionary of that, uh, which all have a dimension, a pan-Hispanic dimension. Uh, so the language institutions have joined force to recognize unity in diversity, and over and above the differences, there is a meeting place and a place for di dialogue between uh, uh, speakers of Spanish. Uh, however, the fact that, that almost 500 million Spanish speakers share ten thousands of, of words and, and, and hundreds of grammatical patterns, uh, and that we can, as we have seen, communicate without too many difficulties on either side of the Atlantic Ocean, that does not mean that there's a single Spanish language. Uh, the Spanish language has such dialectal diversity, phonic, grammatically, uh, discursive and, and, of course, lexical, that it is almost impossible to speak of Spanish as such without restrictions or, or qualifiers, be they geographical, social, or, or, or both. Just from the geographical point of view, we speak of uh, eight macro varieties of Spanish, 
uh, Castilian, Andalusian, and Canary in, in Spain, and then Central American, Andean, Chilean, Rio Platense, and Caribbean Spanish in America. Uh, Pan-Hispanism, as mentioned before, also implies recognizing that, that, that there are several varieties uh, and varieties that have a normative value. Uh, and, 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 and these varieties are different from the Spanish of the center north of the peninsula. So unity and diversity must be understood as concepts that complement each other. Uh, and that they are both possible thanks to a treatment of, of waiting and harmony. Uh, we, uh, the speakers of the Spanish, we speak with a great differential profusion in certain contexts, and we enjoy to do so. But at the same time, in other contexts, we put aside these uh, regional differences to come closer to a consensual Spanish uh, a Spanish that is based on communication uh, agreements. As you may know, uh, all the language is subject to change, so uh, it is essential to maintain this balance between unity and diversity in Spanish in order to ensure that our language, which is spoken in, in, in a vast geographical area, remains mutual, mutually uh, intelligible and does not break uh, the, the essential unity that it maintains at the moment through or uh, throughout all the Hispanic world. Uh, some time ago, uh, a linguist, uh, a very well-known linguist, which is, uh, who was called uh, uh, Gregorio Salvador, pointed out that uh, the, the, the possible the, uh, uh, impact that the, what we call uh, telenovelas or culebrones, you have the images here, it's the Spanish for soap opera, uh, telenovelas or culebrones of, of the 90s and uh, 80s and 90s, uh, they could have uh, in reinforcing the uh, Spanish coine. Uh, these telenovelas uh, were mainly produced in Venezuela, Colombia, and Mexico, uh, have a char some characters many of the characters spoke with certain peculiarities of the Spanish spoken on, on, on in these countries. And these uh, peculiarities soon became understandable to Hispanic viewers from other latitudes. Uh, and if we talk about telenovelas, as an aside, we also uh, cannot fail to remember the, the role that they have played uh, in attracting people to Spanish from different countries, especially from Eastern Europe, where these telenovelas and, and culebrones succeeded. Uh, just like soap operas in the 80s and 90s, and 90s, today the audiovisual media, the new technologies, the, the, the mobility have facilitated much more serious exchanges between uh, Spanish-speaking countries and we are uh, now increasingly familiarized with the various voices of Spanish. We have broadened our passive lexicon and we have improved uh, our knowledge of Spanish um, uh, language cultures. Um, it is unquestionable uh, that for a language to travel successfully over the airwaves, over the internet, it has to be understandable to everyone or at least to the vast majority of, of, of the speakers. No? Therefore, if we want to convey a message in Spanish that is easily understood by any Spanish speaker, we must use neutral Spanish, whether we call it Pan-Hispanic Spanish, Global Spanish, or International Spanish. Uh, however, we have already seen that Spanish is a polycentric language with different varieties and multiple centers of uh, exemplary language or multiple norms. So, so, so there's no one norm uh, of Spanish with greater relevance or preponderance than another, but all, all of them must have the, uh, the same level of, of prestige and hierarchy. For this reason, the, the, the general Spanish or global Spanish that appears in the uh, major international media has this polycentric character. Uh, in this Spanish, the different uses uh, usages of the linguistic regions are legitimate on the sole condition that they are generalized among the educated speakers of, of, of that region, of that uh, uh, area, and do not represent a rupture in the system as a whole. This is the Spanish that we find in television advertising and in the media in Latin America and the United States, 
with Mexican, Rio Platense, Chilean, or uh, Caribbean ecos that may depend. It also the, it is also the case uh, the case of the international Spanish of the media and publishing houses aimed at socially heterogeneous public that incorporates samples of prestigious Hispanic norms and disseminates them. So this neutral Spanish is found, for example, on CNN and Espanol, CNN in Spanish, where we hear Spanish of great syntactic regularity and a phonetic of moderate diversity. Let's watch a short piece of, of a video of the CNN to, to check this out. This is a video from CNN in Espanol. Wow! Otra solicitud de tarjeta de crédito. ¿Cómo me quieren como su cliente? ¿Y cómo no? Si tienes como siete. Así es. Y las tienes todas al tope. Correcto. Pagando más del 20%. Correcto. Sin dejar de pagar el mínimo religiosamente. Puntualmente. Claramente te adoran. Yes. Einstein. Me preguntan. Xavier. So this, the, the Spanish is used in, in this video is uh, um, completely understandable for any Spanish speaker. Although the, the, the phonics uh, is moderately typical of a certain norm of Spanish, in this, uh, in this case, Caribbean Spanish, as the speaker is from Puerto Rico. Uh, so the polycentrism of Spanish is, is, is increasingly present in transnational media groups American channels such as the, the one we have watched now, the, the video we have watched uh, from CNN, but also others such as France 24, France 24, which is now available in Spanish 24 hours a day. Let's watch uh, another video of, uh, in this case, of France 24 in Spanish. France 24 in Spanish. Se cumplen 40 días desde el fallecimiento de Max Amini, esa joven kurda de 22 años que estaba de visita en Teherán y que murió después de haber sido capturada por la policía de la moral. Y según la costumbre y la tradición iraní, es una fecha especial, es el día en que la familia vuelve a reunirse, a recordar la memoria del fallecido y también lo hace con la comunidad. Así que esta mañana se reunieron... Ok, so, so here we have also speech which is totally understandable for any Spanish speaker. Though the Colombian speaker has used another norm of Spanish, more uh, Andina, we can say, no? Uh, these different norm, norms of Spanish are also present, as I said before, in ad an advertisements. No? Let's look now at two Coca-Cola, two different Coca-Cola ads that were shown during COVID lockdown. Uh, the first one, this one, uh, uses the norm of uh, Peninsula Spanish. Volveremos y Manuel nos pondrá al día con sus teorías de la conspiración, siempre tan ingeniosas. Volveremos para escuchar la mejor banda sonora del mundo. ¡Croquetas! Para limpiarnos esa deliciosa salsa una y otra y otra vez. Para ser el ganador entre los perdedores. Para luego ir al siguiente bar y empezar todo de nuevo. Volveremos y apreciaremos nuestros bares más que nunca. Okay, and the, in the second uh, advertisement uh, of Coca-Cola, uh, we are going to hear the norm of Argentinian Spanish. Por los que están solos, por los que están con alguien, por los amigos, por las familias, por los conocidos, por los desconocidos, por los compañeros de clase, por los compañeros de trabajo, por los parientes, por los vecinos, por los que comparten, Por los que tienen chicos, por los que tienen grandes, por los que no pueden trabajar, por los que no pueden dejar de trabajar. Por los que tosen en el codo, por los que no se juntan, por los que no se besan, por los que volvieron, por los que están en cuarentena, por los que sueñan con volver. Por los abuelos, por los que ayudan a los abuelos. Por los bomberos, por los recolectores, por los voluntarios, por los médicos y los enfermeros. Por los que tienen miedo, por los que no tienen miedo. Por los que colaboran, por los que cantan desde los balcones, por los fuertes, por los frágiles, por los que están curados, por los que ya no están. Por los que luchan, por los que no se rinden, por los que creen, por lo que más queremos. Vamos a salir adelante. Por todos. Ok, 
All right. So uh, different two different ads, two different norms. But in general terms, this transnational media and uh, advertising promote a balance between uh, different culture norms of Spanish and also integrate what is diverse. So unity and diversity, you see, since these contents are uh, massively distributed through the internet, which is a, a, a media that is characterized by, 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 by the absence of border, by its subjectivity, uh, we are witnessing at the moment an unprecedented transfer between the linguistic flows of the different varieties and this uh, uh, transfer is favoring the unity already, already observed in the Hispanic world. Uh, that's the great uh, strength of Spanish as a global language based on its geographical extension on one hand and its balance between unity and diversity on the other hand. Let's now turn to a summary of the great opportunities offered by Spanish. We have already seen that 500 million people have Spanish as a mother tongue. And if we are those who also speak or are studying Spanish as an additional language, that figure is close to 600 million. So Spanish is the second most widely spoken mother tongue in the world uh, after Mandarin Chinese. And there is a significant uh, demographic growth predicted for Spanish, which is driven mainly by its strength its strength in the United States, as we commented at the beginning of this talk, and by the institutionalization of the teaching of, the, of, of our language in continents with less tradition, such as Asia, Asia and Africa, uh, which are at the moment current centers of population growth. These places, Asia and Africa, also will be a strategy uh, for consolidating the spread of Spanish as a foreign language. Uh, on the other hand, as you see on the slide, uh, is the second language in which most scientific documents are published uh, and the second most used language on digital platforms such as YouTube, Facebook, Netflix, LinkedIn, Wikipedia, Instagram, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So it is in short, uh, the second language of international communication. And from this perspective, Spanish is an economic asset that is creating commercial and employment opportunities related to the international of, uh, of its learning. Uh, so companies seeking to international, internationalize through Spanish do probably have in mind uh, some of the issues that we have mentioned here. It is a homogeneous language. It is geographically compact, uh, given that most Spanish speaking countries occupy contiguous territories. Also, the Spanish-speaking territory offers a very high level of mutual understanding. Uh, it has official status in 21 countries in the world. It is a language in expansion, and it is uh, the language of an international culture. Uh, all these ideas are collected in the series of posters and brochures, Espanol, A Million Reasons, which can be very useful for highlighting the opportunity, opportunities of Spanish and for its promotion. It's a series that we have, uh, you can download from our uh, website. Uh, um, here you have a, a website. You can visit and, and, and get to all these materials to promote Spanish. Uh, and that's it, that's, that's the, the end of my presentation. I'm very grateful for your patience. Uh, and, and I let you hear again our contact details. Please, please do visit our website, subscribe and follow our channels, and do not hesitate to contact us uh, if you think that we might help with any initiative concerning the, the, the promotion and support of Spanish. Um, as I said at the beginning, this session has been recorded, so you can watch it again if you want uh, to do so. And besides that, you, have, uh, you can download a copy of this presentation on the, on, on the space for our talk in the main lobby of the language show. And now um, uh, we, we are uh, uh, run out of time, but I'm gonna check if you have any any question for me in the Q and A box. I don't know. Yeah, you have you have uh, comments here. 
Is there any way for secondary students Spanish visit the, the Consejería or Instituto Cervantes? You can email us uh, to talk about this. Man, we can, we, from time to time, we have people visiting schools uh, for a Spanish day or to promote Spanish. So please contact us, email us. Uh, right, I see. Thank you very much for all your comments, uh, your positive comments, yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh and that's it i'm gonna i'm gonna finish the session now because i know you have uh, uh many other uh, talks to, to watch uh, today and tomorrow in the language show so thank you very much everyone for attending this presentation and uh see you around bye bye